there's 176 verses in this psalm. And uh, it's all about God's word. Boy, I hope you're listening. Boy, I hope you're listening as the, as the psalmist just kind of takes his time here and, and reveals to us God's word and reveals to us just uh, how in the midst of all the trials, all the struggles, all the pain, all the disappointment, all the attacks, God's word is solid and never changes. You know, nowhere in the scripture does God tell us, you know, that we will not suffer. God never promised to, to spare believers from the trials of life. However, listen to this, God does promise something. He promises his faithful experience when we walk through those trials. He says his grace will be sufficient in our time of need. And he says he will provide the strength we require to endure it all. Now at times, and I know this happens, we just get bowed low beneath the weight of the crushing burdens that, that we seem to be carrying. We, we feel like we could just you know, suddenly plunge into the, the depths of depression, the depths of despair. But our lowest point, if we will look to the Lord and believe his word, he will give us whatever we need to go on. Now, this is precisely what the author of Psalm 119 was experiencing under relentless persecution because of his faithfulness to God's word. That's why they were persecuting him, he had reached the breaking point. He felt he could no longer survive his affliction. We talked about that yesterday in verses 81 to 88. Yet when he needed it most, ever been to that point? I'm done. I'm just done. I, I'm over this. I, I just can't do it. When we need it the most at those times, when, when the psalmist needed it most, God gave him a fresh surge of power. How did he give it to him? From his holy word. God relieved the, the weight of his burden. God revived his spirit. And then God gave him the strength that he needed to keep moving forward. You know, and from the psalmist's agonizing experience, we realize we can receive both instruction and hope for those unbearable trials that we're going through. God's promises are, are true. His word is sufficient even for life's most painful afflictions. In the darkest nights that you and I will ever experience, listen to me, the light of God's word will always, always, always break through. Listen to verse 89. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. So the psalmist, greatly encouraged, began with this powerful declaration about God's word. He says, it is eternal. <laughs> and the word that expresses the concept of eternity here, literally it means the vanishing point. We've talked about that in the past. All it simply means is as far as we can see into the past, as far as we can see into the future, God's word stands firm. When used as it is here with the with a certain preposition in the original language, it emphasizes continuity, um, unchangeability. So the psalmist was not stressing <laughs> just the 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 eternal existence of God's word. That wasn't the only thing he was stressing, but also the eternal relevance and helpfulness of God's word. This persecuted servant of God had reached the lowest point, feeling that he could endure the suffering no longer. It, I'm over it. It's done. I can't go any farther. I've been there. You've been there. But just as God's word had not failed his forefathers, we're going to read that in verse 90, neither did it fail him. Likewise, you and I, 
no matter what's happening right now in our lives, can rest assured that his word will not fail us. Know the scripture's foundation. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. God's word is eternal because it is firmly fixed in heaven, not on earth, but in heaven. Whatever happens in this world cannot affect God's word. Why? Because it is established on totally solid ground, holy ground, eternal ground. When everything we can see passes away, God's word will still be standing. <laughs> Look at verse 90. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. Let's just stop there. In addition to God's holy word, God's faithfulness continues through all, all generations. The basic root idea of this word is firmness or certainty. God's word is faithful. Why? Because God is faithful. We can trust the word of God because we can trust the God of the word. In his time of greatest need, the psalmist had found God to be faithful. He had cried out to the Lord, you know, in, in, in faith, and, and he was trusting the Lord to reach down to, to help him. That was, you know, that was back in verse, I think, 88, as we, as we finished that section. When his soul was fainting, fainting, he, he, he held fast to the conviction that God would keep his word, back in verse 81, and he did. Through the power of God's word, the Lord delivered his faithful servant from deadly despair. This declaration of God's faithfulness was, was more than simply his observation. It carried the power of the revived psalmist's experience. Look at the rest of verse 90. You establish the earth and it abides. So further to support the, the certainty of God's word. What the psalmist did is he pointed to the earth, God's creation. He noted, he said, God's word endures as God wishes. God established the earth and it's contend, it continues on according to God's will and by his sustaining power. Did you see that? You establish the earth and it abides. Verse 91, they continue this day according to your ordinances for all are your servants. The same power, let's deal with this, that upholds creation, upholds God's word. God's word continues to stand according to his ordinances or according to his decrees. Everything that God has given is his servant. Or put another way, all that God has created is subject to him, including his laws. For this reason, God's laws will endure and govern the lives of everyone through all the ages. We put it another way. Let's try this. To, to build our lives on God's word is to build on a solid foundation. We can trust the scripture as surely as we can trust God. And just as the psalmist would, would focus on this sure foundation when he, when he went when crushed by his heavy burden, so should we. God in his uh, faithfulness to his promises, will raise us through his word. Just as he did the psalmist, it's critical that we grasp what our response should be to these truths declared by these verses. Let's deal with some of this. Because God's word is eternal, we should learn it and we should live by it. We should study God's word so diligently so we can know how to apply its wisdom, its power in our daily lives. 
Secondly, because God is absolutely faithful, we should trust his word in every single circumstance. God's word will never fail us. We can build our lives on his principles or the principles of God's word. We can walk in obedience to his commands. We can lean on his promises when we are weak, knowing that his word will accomplish what God says. Thirdly, because God's creation is enduring. We should care for it. God gave human beings a responsibility of tending to the, to the earth. We are to be faithful stewards of everything God has committed to us. Fourthly, because God's laws endure. And because they endure, we should obey them. We're all governed by some set of principles and ideals, whether it's our own ideals or, or those of some other person or even those of the world. The wise will appoint God's laws to govern themselves and his truth cannot fail. Listen to verse 92. Unless your law had been my delight, I would then have perished in my affliction. Before the author of Psalm 119 reached his breaking point, he had repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly declared his delight in God's word. In verse 6, in verse 24, in verse 35, in verse 47, in verse 70, in verse 77, he talked about delighting with joy of God's word. When his heavy soul sank to the level of darkness from which he felt he could not return, the mighty truths of scripture rescued him. God's powerful word protected and encouraged him in his hour of crisis. It carried him through his trial and carried him through his affliction. Verse 93, I will never forget. <laughs> I will never forget your precepts for by them you have given me life. Oh, I, I chuckle because I just, I love these truths so much. I, do I walk in them? Not as much as I want to, but it's getting better because I'm falling more in love with God's word than I've ever been, man. You know, in, in addition to, let's read verse 90, 92 again, 93 again, okay. Uh, I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have given me life. So added to rescuing the Lord's faithful servant, the, the word of God had revived his soul. When he was about to collapse, get this, when he was about to collapse under his heavy load of grief, God's precepts breathed new life in him. When the psalmist cried out for God to quicken him or revive him, he made a holy vow to the Lord. If God would pers preserve his life, he would keep his commandments faithfully. Back in verse 88, the Lord answered the psalmist's prayer and he reaffirmed his promise to obey God's word. Notice something with me here. The psalmist didn't begin to delight in God's word when his trial dragged him into despair. He had delighted in God's word long before this persecution ever began. In fact, it was his faithfulness to God's law that provoked his wicked enemies against him. When he reached the breaking point, he was able to draw strength from the scripture he had stored up inside. And at that moment, he turned to God's word and drew from the abundance of encouragement and spiritual power that he had built up over years of de devotion to the Holy Word of God. Without question, <laughs> we, you and I, should turn to God's Word for a fresh burst of encouragement when we're low. God's guidelines, God's truth can instantly give us what we need to endure a, a moment of crisis but those who have made scripture the daily delight of their lives 
will be strongest when severe trials strike. As we feast each day on the meat of the word of God, we not only receive spiritual nourishment, my friends, <laughs> but for that day, just that we don't have it just for that day, but we also build up spiritual muscle mass, so to speak. Muscle mass to use when we face the fierce trials and the worst challenges of life. Nothing can replace the power that builds up within us when we devote our lives to God and delight in his word every single day. Verse 94. I am yours. Save me. This suffering servant called on God to save him. First, because he belonged to him. And the second part of verse 94 for I have sought your precepts. He applied to the Lord for rescue because throughout his life, he had faithfully sought to obey God's word. And then 95, the wicked will wait for me to destroy me, but I will consider your testimonies. He reminded God that even as the wicked sought to destroy him, he had remained faithful to God's word. The psalmist, ever, ever hopeful, ended his prayer by once again confessing his confidence in God's word. He noted that even, even the best human efforts, which he refers to as perfection, have an end. Verse 96, in other words, did you see that? I have seen the consummation of all perfection, but your commandment is exceedingly broad. In other words, everything, everything, get this, everything of this world is limited, my friends. But God's mighty word is exceedingly broad, boundless, unlimited. Humans can never achieve perfection. But hear me, God's word alone is perfect. There's no limit to its endurance, no limit to its completeness, no limit to its sufficiency, its relevance, or its power. And just as the psalmist's persecutors were relentless in trying to destroy him, he was relentless in praying to God to rescue him. One of the great lessons Jesus teaches us is that we need to pray persistently. We should never give up on God. When the Lord doesn't answer immediately, we shouldn't lose heart, nor, nor should we doubt him. Instead, we should continue to pray with absolute confidence that God is listening. We should never doubt that he will answer in his perfect time and according to his divine purposes. Listen to me, as a son or daughter of God, through saving faith in Jesus Christ, remember, you belong to him. Back in 94, it says, I am yours, save me. You belong to him because you are his dear child. You have the privilege of approaching him for everything you need. Remember also that the faithful obedience to the Lord gives you greater boldness in prayer. That's what he said in, in verse 94. I am yours, save me, for I have sought your precepts. Continue to meditate on God's word, my friends. Don't lose confidence in his promises. God's word is unlimited until God sees fit to remove your burden. His word will strengthen you to bear it no matter how heavy it may be. Verse 96 again, I have seen the consummation of all perfection, but your commandment is exceedingly broad. Just continue to meditate on God's word and don't lose confidence. It's unlimited, his word. 
And again, like I said a moment ago, until he sees fit to remove that, let his word strengthen you. Let his word bring confidence. Let his word bring deliverance as only it can. Father, we thank you for your word. It is absolutely so powerful. And Lord, I pray that as we've been going through this 119th Psalm, that everyone that's been listening, and I know it's happening in my spirit, Lord, there's just a fresh hunger for your word, Lord. Just a fresh, insatiable appetite. Because as I'm going through hurts and trials right now, Lord, as as many of my friends are and many watching right now, are going through some 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 hurts, some some deep valleys, Lord, some incredible oppression and pain. Let us find comfort in your word until you see fit to deliver us from that trial. Let us understand this truth. We can find comfort in your word because we're going to read truths in your word and we can have faith and confidence in the midst of whatever we're going through as long as we are being comforted through your word, as you show us truths, as we're taking that, that, that heavy hit, Lord. But in your, in your power, in your divine wisdom, when your purpose has been accomplished, there will be deliverance. Thank you, sweet Savior. Give us a fresh hunger for your word. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, my friends, we'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.